Hi, and welcome back to Storytime with Miss Tanya. Today we're going to be reading a story of a blues legend named Muddy Waters. The author's name is Michael uh, Mahan, and it's illustrated by Evan Turk. I had, um, I was very, actually, I was very lucky to be able to meet this author, and he actually read this book to us, which was uh, really amazing, and I, I really enjoyed it. So I hope you guys too, and you haven't had a chance to check um, this book out, I, I think you should. It has a really great illustrations, and we also have one about um, uh, rock legend Carlos Santana. So if you haven't checked those out, you should when we go, uh, come back to school. So um, and it's also illustrated by Evan Turk. There you go. I apologize about the glare. I've been trying to get a good um, area to sit, but I'm having trouble with it. So let's see how this one goes. McKinley Morganfield was never good at doing what he was told, especially when it came to playing in the mud. His mama should have been mad, but she couldn't help but laugh. Ah, my muddy baby, my sweet muddy baby. McKinley's mama gave him life, a laugh, and then she was gone forever. Oh, child long gone. Oh, child sail on. But McKinley did have Grandma Della. She scooped him up and try to keep him clean, and finally just started calling him Muddy. And he had music. Muddy loved the say it with me voice of the preacher and the glory, glory singing of the choir. But the music Muddy really loved, they didn't play on Sundays. What Muddy really loved was fishy fry music. It was shake off the dust and wring out your worries and laugh and cry and feel alive music. It was the blues and Muddy couldn't get enough of it. To have the blues was to feel bad, but to play the blues was to take that low down skunk funk deep stomach hurt and turn it into something else. Muddy liked the blues. Unfortunately, Grandma Della did not. Last I checked, you can't eat the blues for breakfast, said Grandma Della. No child of mine is going to waste his time with music. But Muddy was never good at doing what he was told. So he found himself a half-smashed kerosene can to beat on and a wheezy accordion to squeeze and a tired piece of wire to pluck, and made himself enough noise to feel good. Not even Grandma Della could keep from dancing. One night, Muddy watched his hero blues legend Son House smash an empty bottle, take the bottleneck and smooth its jagged edges over a fire. This is called a slide, he said dragging the bottleneck up the strings. The guitar howled like a wolf, powerful, lonely, and proud. That was the sound of the Mississippi Delta. That was the sound Muddy heard in his heart. Muddy saved his pennies, bought himself an old Stella guitar, and practiced and played for anyone who wanted to listen, and a few who didn't. After a long while, the howl that was in his heart finally started coming out of his guitar. On weekends, Muddy played the juke joints jump, playing for the workers when it was time to unwind. But when Mud Monday came, Muddy was back in his overalls, back working the fields. Sharecropping was back busting soul breaking work and Muddy was already in a bad mood when the new boss man started picking on him. Muddy had gotten good at burying his anger and his pride and his hurt. To do otherwise could get you beaten up or worse. But today, Muddy couldn't do it. 
He was tired of being picked on. I ain't no boy, he said, and I sure ain't your boy. The boss man's face went red with anger as Muddy walked away. Stop right there or you'll never work in this town again. But Muddy was never good at doing what he was told. Chicago's got a lot of people, he told Grandma Della, but I don't think they ever heard they ever had a muddy waters before. Me and my guitar gonna make it just fine. Don't you worry. Oh child long gone, or child soon. The clack-a-track steam blur of an Illinois Central train rocketed Muddy and his guitar into the bustle and buzz of Chicago's South Side. Chicago was plugged in, turned on, and turned up, and so was its music. Records with electrified guitars and jazzy horns were making the blues jump all over town. Chicago was a city of the Brown Bomber, Joe Louis, the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. It was a city of the Chicago Defender the legendary black newspaper dedicated to fighting, fighting racial justice. And now it was the city of muddy waters. In the clubs, the bebop, jazz and swing of horns and strings had laid itself down over the blues like a chiffon blanket. This was music by city smooth, sophisticates, not country dusted hound dogs. No one wanted to hear a country bowl playing country blues. You got to shake the dust off, the club owners teased. You got to jazz it up. But Muddy was never good at doing what he was told. The way he figured, his playing was just fine. It was their hearing that needed help. So Muddy plugged in, turned on, and turned up. And out came the sound of the delta buzzing and in math like an angry hornet's nest looking for a fight. It was a deep feeling, gut bucket, gut aching music full of, full of life and love and trouble and pride. It was people, it made people stand up and raise their hands and stomp their feet and laugh and cry and come alive. It was nothing like the primped and polished sounds people were used to and they loved it. Whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah, sail on, sail on. Muddy loved the clubs, but in the late hours and low pay took their toll. He couldn't live on change alone. One day, Muddy got a call. A friend was making a record at the Universal Recording Studios, and he needed a sideman to back him up on guitar. If Muddy played well, they might even let him record his own song. Finally, a chance. First, they recorded his friend, and then they recorded him. Muddy did exactly what they told him to do. They added strings and horns and that soft and sweet Bluebird Records beat. But Muddy didn't care. He was just happy to be making a record. Too bad they put someone else's name on it. Muddy couldn't believe it. This was supposed to be his big break. This was supposed to be his record, but it wasn't, at least not according to the cover. A year later, Muddy made a record for Columbia. This time, they got his name right. Too bad they decided not to release the record. Muddy was crushed. I play it like they say to play it, and they still don't like it, he thought. What am I supposed to do? When record producer Leonard Chess called, Muddy knew not to get his hopes up. Leonardo just want, wanted Muddy to record Leonard's music, Leonard's way, but Muddy knew this might be his last chance, so he said yes. Soft is right, sweet and polite, says Leonard. That's where the cats are at. Muddy picked up his guitar, walked to his microphone, but he couldn't do it. 
not again. Muddy had never been good at doing what he was told anyway. When Leonard pointed to the horns, Muddy pointed to the exit. No horns, no jazz, no fooling, he said. I'm go if I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail playing my music my way. There was lightning in Muddy's eyes. If Leonard could bottle that, maybe they'd have something. You get one chance, said Leonard. Don't blow it. Muddy sat down with his guitar, pulled the microphone up close and closed his eyes. Whoa, child. He remembered the dust and the plow and the meanness of the land and the softness of King Cotton. Whoa, child. He called up the sticky heat of the summer night, the power of, power of love and the need for connection in the world that was so good at pulling people apart. And he played just like Sun House had taught him, not with his fingers, but with his heart. Muddy sang about life and he, as he lived it, with all of its pain, its power, and its glory forever. Still unconvinced, Leonard printed only 3,000 copies of the record and sent them to local stores. Muddy chewed his nails and waited. What if people didn't like his voice? What if... He wasn't good enough after all. Muddy didn't have to wait long to find out. All across the South Side, the boom and the bounce of Muddy's voice thundered down from open apartment windows. People were talking. This new blues was something special. It felt honest and raw. It felt real. It felt like the past and the future and the country and the city all rolled into one. Not only did Muddy have a record, he had a hit. In 24 hours, it was sold out. Leonard printed more. A lot more. One day, the Beatles would shake, will be shaking Muddy's hand. One day, the President of the United States would be tapping his toes. One day, the whole world would know the name Muddy Waters. One day was on its way. Oh, child long gone, oh, child sail on. We are sailing on. And I hope you enjoyed this book. Everybody have a great week and I will see you guys soon. Bye for now.